This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Tails, it's not just Sonic the Hedgehog's buddy, it's a way to protect your privacy, and now we're gonna check out Shannon's tail. It's, uh, that's the one. Where did it go? Tail. No. <laughs> well, you didn't like you didn't you didn't you didn't like my you didn't like my bring you in. That was pretty cute. Yeah. I liked it. All right. All right so, um, have you heard of this Linux distro? Okay. To be honest, Shannon, I have, but I have not used it personally. Yeah. Um, and I've looked into doing it the hard way. Yeah. And I have done it the hard way, and it's hard. Mm. Uh, so I do like the idea of this, and I might start using it maybe in a virtual machine or something. Okay. Well, this I, I know is crazy some, easy. I get some friends who do use this, and okay. Know, so this Good distro is called Tails. You just Google Tails and you can find it. It's really, really easy. It's a Linux distro that boasts all about their security and their privacy and their anonymity for their users. That's what I want. Yes, exactly. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants security and privacy. So all the connections that are on Tails, they go through Tor. And mm. we all know Tor, of course, the onion router. And so if you're not familiar onion. with Tor, that is a uh, project that is supported by the EFF and it is a wonderful way of doing uh, secure-ish, private-ish communications yes. over the internet by bouncing your stuff through traffic. You could probably explain yeah. it better than I can. So Tor bounces traffic throughout the world so that somebody can't learn who you are, what sites you visit, and the sites can't figure out where you're from exactly because the location is completely obscured no matter where you are. And Tails has to be booted also from a flash drive or a CD. You, you can do it in a VM. Well, you could, and you could also install it. I guess you could install it on your computer if you really wanted to, but you always don't. Always run Tails. <laughs> yeah, Why not? always run Tails. It is based but on then, Debian, and I love some love me some Debian. So. It is, yeah. But then, if you do install it on your on your computer, you have that distro on your computer, and it leaves traces of your actions on on the actual machine. So if you just stick it on a USB, and at at the end of the day, when you oh. unplug it and you shut down completely erases everything that you've done. Right, because, and then the same thing with a CD. I mean, at least with a CD, you know that there's actually no write partition on it. Or I wonder if you could probably boot off of like a uh, SD cards, have like a switch on them that allows oh. you to put them in write protect mode so That's that the idea. operating system can't actually write something back in there. Hey, so we should try that. Well, the idea is you get owned or something while yeah. you're on that instance. You reboot and you're not owned because it hasn't touched your file system. It hasn't touched your computer at all. That's true. And then Tails is also really cool because it uses encryption for your files and data, even instant messaging. So it's got like tools built in. Sweet. Yeah, all sorts of tools are built in and it uses your RAM memory, not the hard drive space. So any traces are wiped clean after you shut down off of your USB stick. You can even save data onto another hard drive or USB while using Tails. So if you're working on some really, really important file and you have to save it at the end of the day, you can save it onto another USB and you can encrypt it if you want. There's okay. no problem with that. That's cool. So it does come with a lot of really cool stuff already built in for you. Well, so I'm, I'm used to like Tor with like the, the Tor browser bundle where yeah. I'm just like, it's Firefox over Tor. What else, you know, and that's the primary and I'm usage that's for me. Hard to set up, right? Well, it's if you do it yourself, there's a yeah. little bit of, you know, it's a little involved. It's not too bad, but um, but my concern is always like, what if it's leaky? What if DNS queries aren't going through it? What if, yeah. you know, you don't set it up properly? Um, and so the Tor browser bundle does a great job of making it easy to like download a version of Firefox that's already set up. It's a portable app version of Firefox that's got Tor built in. Uh, this is taking that a step further because yes. now you've got all of the components of the operating system and they've gone through great lengths to make sure that it is as secure as they can, which I, mm -hmm. you know, would definitely trust the Torch Project people to make something that, uh, and especially since it's open source and can be vetted. Of course, of course, yeah. yes. Go on. So, pre-installed software and tools, it has HTTPS everywhere for your online fun uh, Lux for USB encryption, L-U-K-S. Yeah. Um, okay, I've, I've never stuff. used that one, so I'm Oh, it's a great way of doing encryption in Linux. We'll talk about it. It's kind of like TrueCrypt, ah, kind of. That would make a good sound. Hmm. Hmm. Open PGP for emails, of course. We'll be talking about that Which we always have here. to have. Yep, OTR, OTR for uh, instant messages and Nautilus wipe, so you can wipe clean the entire hard drive and all your files from the computer completely. Nice. Excellent. And I it has the... plenty of other stuff pre-installed, too, for your security, security and your privacy. So it's kind of like cool. like... Backtrack is to pen testing as Tails is to yeah. privacy. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you're a journalist in a really, really scary country and you don't want anybody to track what you're doing while you're writing your articles, you could use Tails. 
Now, there are some caveats to that, though. So there I, are. say I'm a journalist and, you know, pick, pick the, uh, your country of choice where, as an American, you probably don't want to go. Um, I don't want to, like, give away that I'm using encryption because just yeah. by having encryption, you're suddenly an enemy of the state. And there are some really scary places, and I don't want to get into it because I live in a, you know, a land of Disneyland and kittens. But, um, <laughs> but there are people that get disappeared because they speak out about the government. They blog. Well, if I'm their using tails, and, how are they going to know? Well, if you're using tails, you're on tour. And if mm -hmm. the ISP, which in a lot of cases in those countries are controlled by the government, yeah. they can see that your packets are going through the Onion Router, even if they can't see what your message is they know that you're using some sort of obfuscation technology uh, like Tor. Right. Yeah, so what's nice about the Tor, uh, Tails project is that even on their website, they list out a whole bunch of things that you have to remember whenever you're using Tails. They're saying like, hey, it's not going to keep you completely private because there's still some loopholes that people could go through if they really, really wanted to. Well, like for example, exit nodes. And uh, we haven't gotten into like big discussions about Tor in a long, long time on Hack5, but uh, you know the idea that your packets bounce through different nodes, eventually they need to, unless you're, of course, only dealing within the Tor ecosystem, right, yeah. if you're wanting to go out to the internet, they have to hit what's called an exit node. And that's the node that finally takes that data and then puts it out onto the global internet. Mm, um, true. And some would venture to guess that at least half of those are run by nation states or other uh, mm. nefarious organizations that maybe don't have your best interests in mind. So one, more people should be running their own exit nodes that aren't nefarious. Uh, but two, you should keep that in mind that this isn't going to, you know, protect you from a, uh, you know, potential global adversary as they were. <laughs> a potential global adversary. It's also not, not going to make all your passwords really nice. You have to make sure that you do that beforehand. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to do a segment on strong passwords. You guys know no. that. <laughs> you guys already know how to make your passwords strong. And you also have to trust the ta Tails distro, you know. You, it's just like using Ubuntu. You have to trust it beforehand. Or just like using Microsoft, you trust that yeah. they don't have backdoors in that. I mean, exactly. at least with the <laughs> backdoors. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Paul. Um, at least with uh, uh, Tails and and Ubuntu, like Mark Shuttleworth was talking about, uh, like oh, last right. week when with we were the... talking about your, your Ubuntu privacy concern, uh, it's open source, so it can be vetted. And yep. so, at least in this instance, you know, you have to. Uh, there's always going to be some level of trust, just like you trust. Comcast, not yeah. to sniff all your data. Well, maybe you don't, so you use Tor. Which I assume they do. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Well, you know, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> man, I could totally tinfoil hat right now, but I'm not know, going right? to because it's already a long <laughs> show. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you already trust, you know, if you don't trust your ISP, maybe mm -hmm. you use uh, Tails with Tor and at least maybe only half the exit nodes of the government, and then, you know, right. there you go. Hi, the government. Um, and <laughs> The government, no! <laughs> yeah. And the other... Uh, 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 I forget what we were talking about. Oh, oh the, the trust that, you know, so it's just like, it's always matters of trust. Just like we yeah, talk about is. like VPNing your traffic when you're on a public Wi-Fi over to your virtual private server in the cloud. You trust that that virtual private server uh, company isn't sniffing because right, that's course. basically your exit node. Uh, just that you trust, uh, you know, uh, canonical not mm -hmm. to bake some evil stuff into Ubuntu, just as you trust the Debian developers not to F up Debian and, um, I think that it's just easier to lend your trust to an open source project that has this kind of, um, I don't know, they're, they're, they're serious about your privacy. I met these yeah, guys yeah. at an EFF event, and these guys are serious. Oh, really? They're That's under serious awesome. um, scrutiny by the governments and whatnot of the world of because, course. you know, heaven forbid, we actually have the, uh, God, I'm tinfoil hatting again. <laughs> That's anyway, okay, Darren. move on. <laughs> we all know that you have the tinfoil hat. But yes, hat all I'm saying this. is, yes. I, I would trust this. Yeah. You know, because I'm not, I, I, don't I don't have the time to go through every to, line of honestly. code. I mean, and it's I don't open have the source. Knowledge. So I'm sure people have gone through it and have like s looked through it with scrutiny and said, like, hey, where, is, where are the problems? You know, as long at? as we're talking but, about trust, though, we should probably mention that it, when you go and download this, make sure that you actually get the, um, the, the fingerprint of that image file. Yes. Uh, and verify that what you downloaded is what you think you downloaded. Because, um, you know, a man in the middle attack could occur to where what you thought was uh, the legit version of Tails ended up being your nation state's version of Tails mm -hmm. that doesn't do yeah. what you think it does. And I like I like that they actually give you a step-by-step -step guideline on how to do that on their website too. They're like, hey, make sure that the key is correct when you download this, and they, they tell you exactly what to do. And 
that's one of the only distros that I've seen that actually does that for you yeah. on their website. And it's weird because I've actually had downloads of uh, Tor fail on ISPs really? here in the in the nation, huh. in, in the U.S., which is kind of crazy. That's I mean, you keep, you just try again and you try from a different uh, source and it works. But anyway, really, I don't want to. Maybe get that's why they hat. have a mirror on their website too. Hmm. Well, there's plenty of mirrors, but anyway, the point is that if you verify the signature, then you should yeah. you should have a pretty good uh, level of trust that what you downloaded is what you think you have. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, this is what the website, or this is what Tails looks like on the distro. Um, I do want to mention though, if you're just using this in a cafe or something and you're worried like some kind of government official is watching what you're doing, you can boot it up in this XP lookalike edition during, like right when you boot up, you have this option. Oh cute, so it's even hilarious. though it is based on Debian Linux, they put a skin on it that makes yes. it look like Windows XP? It looks just like Windows XP all the way down to the background. Because that's probably what you're <laughs> going to find in most, um, in, in, in a lot of cyber cafes yeah. around the world. Did I just say cyber cafe? I guess you that did. is really a thing yep. all over the world, and so um, I've been to cyber cafes. Yeah, you know, up in Toronto and stuff. Well, they also have. You were actually showing me some other feature that they have to secure you if you're say at a cyber cafe and you don't trust the hardware you're on. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, for example, so here I have the browser open, and what Darren was mentioning is I have an on-screen keyboard. So you know about keyloggers. If somebody has a keylogger on a machine and you want to boot into, boot up on that machine and like I don't know, check your email or something like that. If there's a keylogger, they're going to grab your password, so you can use it on screen keyboard. Oh, I love that they have this installed in there. I mean, it's such a simple thing, but this isn't something that I would normally have thought of to actually use. Is this on screen keyboard in case of those keyloggers? Well, yeah, I guess if you're using this on your own machine and you trust your own machine's keyboard, then that's one thing. But yeah. you're right. If you're at a cyber cafe. I guess it used to be that you could just look at the back of the cable and like, oh, there's a you know dongle here between right. the PS2 or the USB port and the computer. But I guess you can't necessarily tear apart their keyboards and look at them. Huh? That that's the other thing is like <laughs> more often now you actually see keyloggers being embedded inside of the keyboard. Mm, so that you know, would be kind of scary. bring a screwdriver. No, just use the on-screen keyboard. <laughs> bring a screwdriver. Well, well, other than this on-screen keyboard, anyway. there's also, uh, they have this open PGP encryption applet up at the top, and you also see this little onion right here connected to the Tor network. Nice. So when you first uh, boot it up, you do have to log on to the wireless. It, it'll tell you that the proxy server is refusing connections at the moment, because you actually have to connect through the onion router. And once you do, it'll give you this. Congratulations, your browser is configured to use Tor. So it is ready to go. You don't have to pre-install anything, That's it already what I like. has it installed. You don't have to worry about it it's being great. leaky and DNS going out the thing. No, they've it's already done, done everything you. for you. It's I like awesome. It. Cool. I, I love that it automatically does this for you and you don't have to install all the extra mumbo jumbo. It's just ready to go. <laughs> nice. Well, you can find all the links for all of these things and more over at our show notes at hack5.org. Thank you once again, Shannon, for Thank bringing you. us the tales. And we I will be back it. in just a bit for your feedback and technos photos and all of that other fun stuff. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Join Modding Wizard, Ben Heck, and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show each week right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben goes into the workshop to give viewers a valuable soldering tutorial. Don't forget to go over to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win the latest builds from Ben Show. Time once again to check port 110. Yes, it is. And you know, I've had so much Starbucks today. Oh my gosh, my heart is going crazy right now. Woo, caffeine, caffeine overload? Yeah, nice. it's crazy. All right, so Clifford, he asks, hey guys, I am always on the go and I need access to my home network for a growing number of reasons. Do you know of a free portable VPN client that can fit on a flash drive? Okay, so if you're doing your own home VPN, you guys know how I feel about OpenVPN. It's real simple to set up for home users, and Adito makes that super simple. Uh, we've done segments on that in the past. Here's what I've found as far as portable is concerned. Um, OVPN, OVPNP.SF.net. It's, um, it's the opens. It's the portable version of the, VP, uh, the OpenVPN client. It's on SourceForge. It's Windows only, which is important to note. But the nice thing is it is OpenVPN and it is open source. And so nice. that's important to me. Um, the other ones that I've found are Kitty, which is a fork. Kitty? Yeah, well, yeah it's K-I-T-T-Y, just like, like Putty, P-U-T-T-Y, because oh, nice. it's all T-T-Y anyway. I got it. Um, which is a fork of Putty. 
It, uh, is, it basically allows you to do SSH tunneling for non-privileged users. It is, again, Windows, but it's a fork of an open source, so it's open source. And mm -hmm. so that's the only thing that I've found that's open source for Windows. And so okay. I would encourage anybody else that knows of something to do, like PPTP or IPsec, uh, if, those are the, if those are the protocols that you're going to be using when you, SSA, or when you um, VPN into your home network, um, go ahead and email us feedback at hack5.org if you know of something else. But the thing is, like, well, I found some other stuff out there, and there's some really crappy looking apps right, uh, for, for Windows that do it <laughs> yeah. that are closed source. And I feel like when it comes to your VPN client, you know, the thing that's going to be taking your sensitive it data and putting trust. it through. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So totally without agree. the source, it's like, sorry, bro, not going to use it, you know? <laughs> sorry, bro. You got hacks. Not going to go with those hacks. Yeah, so, what? It's from Cisco, and I, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to roll right into that Technolist photo of the week this week. This one comes from Lenny. He sends in a photo of his son getting started with tech very early. He says, here's my son playing on our VPS's, uh, VPS with Minecraft bucket <laughs> and Ventrilo. He is hooked at age three. He's an op, and he can even run several commands like slash tp slash give slash time and he loves kitty cannon and oh, kitty cannon seriously Yay. that is kind of depressing we're working on in texture packs next and thanks to all the great tips and tricks and if you guys have pictures, you can always send those over to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line Technolust. Or if you have children, you can go into your command prompt and type <laughs> sudo su tac, hit enter, enter your password, and then give the keyboard to your children. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's an awesome idea. They can't break it. <laughs> <laughs> Three-year-old with root. What would go wrong? Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. And now it's time for the trivia. Oh, I love the trivia. What was last week's? <laughs> last week's question was, what woman from geek history designed COBOL? And the answer was Grace Hopper. This week's question is, who was the first woman? I love those old school history women. So who was the first woman to win the Turing Award, essentially for the Nobel Prize for computing? And you can answer that over at hack5.org slash, what is it, trivia? Trivia. Hack5.org slash trivia. Yeah, it's her first time. <laughs> totally Don't understand. Don't worry about the pandas. Uh, of course, we value your feedback. So if you have some questions, if you have some comments, if you want to get involved in some crazy uh, PGP-based alternative radio store and forward happiness, uh, or if you want to let us know uh, what you think on Tails and other sorts of ways to use the Onion Router or, or alternative internet fun stuff, uh, uh, feedback at hack5.org. That's where... We're like forgetting all the links. And you guys can always go over to hack5.org slash follow to find links to all of our social networks to keep up to date on what we're doing and what conventions we're going to. Yeah, and if you want to support us directly, hakshop.com, that's where we have all the fun hacker gear that we uh, know and love, and so you can support us directly that way, because that definitely um, words. With that, I'm Shannon Morris. I'm Darren Kitchen. <laughs> Trust your technolust. Yeah, it's like <laughs> rotating telephone booths. <laughs>